Hi there, Rachel Sherman here, and in this video, we're going to look at divisibility and then apply the divisibility rule to proving statements about integers. Something that we need to know about divisibility is that for purposes of proof, we always use the multiplicative definition of divisibility to avoid accidentally dividing by zero or sometimes things break and you know it doesn't quite work out. So by using this rule, as you see written here, where n and d are integers and d cannot equal to zero, so that's your divisor, we say n is divisible by d if and only if n is equal to d times some integer k. So if you can rewrite any type of divisibility in that form, then that would verify that things are in fact divisible by one another. So for this and, pur and our purposes moving forward, just always read this statement when you have that line div as divides. So we would read this as d divides n. So in each of the following examples, these are things that can be rewritten using the divides notation. For example, is 21 divisible by 3? We're asking, does 3 divide 21? Which, in other words, means can 21 be written as the product of 3 times some integer value? and we know that it can be multiplied by 7 to give us back 21. Similarly, if the word factor is used, it's another way of asking, does that value divide the other? So in this case, does 6 divide 54? And for the same purposes, yes, we can rewrite it. So you'd have 54 equals 6 times your uh, 9. And from here, you can extrapolate that idea to using arbitrary variables as well. So if you have integers a and b, can we say that 3 divides 3a plus 3b? So in other words, we're asking, does 3 divide 3a plus 3b? So just like we did before in each of these that were just numerical, rewrite it. 3a plus 3b can we write that as 3 times some integer value? Well, if we factor out a 3 here, we're left with 3 times a plus b. And the closure of the integers under addition tells us that a plus b must be an integer. So yes, this is also true. So as far as divisibility goes, the proofs of these are very similar to what you would see when you're talking about uh, things like even odd uh, also proving statements about rational numbers, only this time you're calling upon the definition of divisibility or definition of divides for short. One property that the that divisibility has is that it does fall into the transitive category. So if you were to have integers a, b, and c, if you can guarantee that a divides b and b divides c, so if those properties hold true, then we know that a will divide c directly. And how would you prove something like this? It's actually pretty straightforward. So just like most other proofs about integers, you start out by making your hypothesis statement. So this time we have a little bit more to work with than if we were just trying to prove something about even or odd. So suppose we have integers a, b, and c such that a divides b and b divides c. So we're talking about integers a, b, and c that have to have this property, that a divides b and b divides c. So that's our hypothesis. That's what we're working with here. The only thing we know is that we're trying to show that a divides c. And in order to get to that point, see if you can create some type of equations out of what you have already and manipulate it. That's kind of what we're used to doing from when we first learned how to prove statements about integers. The only definition we have here is that we have a definition for divisibility. So by the definition, here's our reason that we can do what we're about to do. We know that b is equal to a times, let's say, some integer m, and c is equal to b times some other integer n. So I'll 
put that here, m and n are integers, because that's from our definition of divides. So process over here, kind of think of what we're trying to show. If the goal, remember, this is the conclusion here. If the goal of your conclusion is that a divides c, that means that c is equal to a times some integer. So can we write c equal to a times something else? Well, we have an equation for c. We've got an equation for b, and you'll notice that c is in terms of b. Use substitution here. So if we replace b with am, so in other words, c equals bn, which is equal to am times n. We're allowed to rewrite this. It's one of our algebraic properties. In other words, c is equal to a times mn. And we know that m and n are both integers, and the product of integers is closed. So that means that we have an integer result here. So let's say let some other variable we haven't used yet, maybe k equals m times n. And we know that k is an integer by the closure of the integers. under multiplication. At this point, you're in the home stretch. Rewrite this and see if it now fits back into the definition of divides for our conclusion. So one last time, by substitution, we know that c is equal to a times k. And since we know that k is an integer, we verified it here. That's the definition of divides, which shows us that a divides c. So just make one more sentence to kind of wrap that thought up. So by the definition of divides, a divides c. Therefore, just restate the original statement. For all integers a, b, and c, if a divides b and b divides c, then a divides c. Once you've made your final statement, just be sure to wrap up your proof. You can either use the closed in box or write QED at the end. Let's go ahead and take one uh, look at one more example that uses the definition of divisibility in a proof setting. So similar to what we had just seen here, but we're going to do a slight variation. This time, for all integers a, b, and c, if a divides b and a divides c, then a divides the quantity c minus 2b. So let's see how manipulations of b and c would work in this case, and this itself is true. If you weren't sure if something is true first, it's kind of your step zero is to verify that these things are true. You could plug in if you wanted, but remember that just plugging in when you're dealing with an infinite domain, there's no way to prove this by exhaustion. So something like that would just be un impossible. So for a case like this, we're going to use our direct proof technique. Start with our hypothesis statement. Suppose A, B, and C are integers, and this time they have the property that a divides both b and c. So we'll say such that a divides b and a divides c. The proof itself, for the most part, is almost the same to what we had just done, at least how we started out. We're going to start by expanding those into equations using the definition of divides. So in this case, we'll say that a divides b means that b is equal to a times m, and a divides c means that c is equal to a times n for some integers 
M and N. Now, ultimately, this is where we kind of paused before. Also, we want to look at how we can make this conclusion pan out. So if we want to show that A divides C minus 2B, that means that C minus 2B has to equal A times an integer. So before you even get too far along here, you should be thinking about what you're trying to show. Well, if you start with C minus 2B and you have equations in terms of C and or in terms, of, I should say, you have these equations for B and C, it should lead you to that thought process of go ahead and substitute in. So regardless of what's in here, see if you can substitute and factor out an A in some capacity. Because again, that's kind of what we're working towards. We can worry about the details later. So here, go ahead and substitute. So in other words, C minus 2B is equal to AN minus 2AM. And since these both have an A, you can factor that out, and we're left with n minus 2m. For the same reasons that we just went through before, we know that both uh, the integers are closed under both addition and multiplication, of which we have both here. So if we can rewrite this and declare a variable, just like we did before, using that closure property, it's going to allow us to say that a divides c minus 2b. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this in and take a quick commercial break here. When you get back, you'll see kind of where this is headed. Now that you've verified that k is an integer or whatever variable you had used here, go ahead and substitute, and then the rest of the proof wraps up in the exact same way as the previous one. You're then calling back on the definition of divisibility, which subsequently has proven that A divides C minus 2B. So I've tidied this proof up just to show that conclusion since it's very repetitive as the previous example. Something to keep in mind is that this will work no matter what type of combination you have of addition and subtraction, even multiplication over here. So if you had something, for example, let's say uh, 7C plus 5B, you'd have the exact same proof, only you would use 7c and 5b instead when for when you're substituting. That concludes this video. Thanks for watching.